Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel and today we are going to discuss about tibia. So guys this is the tibia and it is the medial side bone of leg and it is larger than the lateral side bone which is fibula. So this as like other typical long bone it has uh, upper end, it has uh, a lower end and the shaft. So this is the anterior view of tibia okay and uh, this is the posterior view of tibia this is the medial view of tibia and this one is the lateral view first we should know about the general features of tibia so let's start with upper end tibia has uh, two uh, articulating condyles which present superiorly uh, which articulates with femur to form knee joints these are the condyles and the area present between these condyle is known as intercondylar area this prominent structure in the anterior surface of upper end is known as tibial tuberosity and there is uh, facet present on the posterior inferior direction uh, known as fibular facet and it articulates with upper end of fibula to form superior tibiofibular joint. Now the question is how do we differentiate between the medial and lateral condyles? And medial condyle is little bigger than uh, lateral condyle. So this area you can see it is little larger than this side area. So this must be the medial condyle. And if you see it in anterior view, so here you can also find that this area is looks little larger then this area and if you see it in posterior view so here as well you can see this area is smaller as compared to this side area so this area must be the medial condyle all right so on the anterior surface of lateral condyle you feel the bulge out structure and the prominent structure and this structure is known as jardis tubercle while in the posterior inferior direction there is a presence of fibular facet which articulates with the upper end of fibula to form superior tibiofibular joint. There are various uh, vascular foramens present in the anterior surface of upper end for maintenance of proper blood supply to the upper end or uh, knee joint. If we come back to the articulating structures so the center part of both these condyles comes in direct contact with the condyles of femur while the peripheral part attaches to the meniscus of knee joint. One more difference you can observe between medial and lateral condyle is that lateral condyle is little extra protruded out of the body as compared to the medial side. Next we are going to discuss about uh, intercondylar area. So this area marked area you can see is known as intercondylar area and it is the area present between both these articulating structures and the most prominent part on the medial condyle is known as medial tubercle and most prominent part present on lateral condyle is known as lateral tubercle and the most prominent structure present in between these tubercle is known as intercondylar eminence. Next part we have is a tibial tuberosity which is present on the anterior surface of upper end and it is divided into two parts with the epiphyseal line the upper smooth part and the lower rough part. Now I am going to show you how tibia articulates with femur and this is how tibial condyles articulate with femoral condyles. Now we are uh, done with upper end then let's jump to the lower part which is slightly expanded and it has five surfaces. Let's start with anterior surface so it has upper smooth part and lower rough part. Next surface we have is a medial surface which has a downward projected structure which is subcutaneous and is known as medial malleolus. So next uh, surface we have is posterior surface which has uh, a protuberance 
which is also known as posterior malleolus next is lateral surface which has triangular fibular notch which articulates with fibula to form inferior tibiofibular joint and uh, last we have is uh, inferior surface which articulates with talus so this is the area which articulates with talus to form ankle joint so this was about the lower end of tibia now we are going to discuss about borders first we have anterior border which is sharp crest like and s shape and it extends from the tibial tuberosity to the anterior margin of medial malleolus and uh, next we have is uh, medial border which extends from the medial condyle and goes down to end at the posterior margin of medial malleolus last border we have is interosseous border or lateral border which arises just anterior to the fibular facet this is fibular facet so it arises from here and it goes down to end at anterior margin of fibular notch this is fibular notch so this was all about uh, borders now let's talk about surfaces first we have lateral surface so it is the area lies between the anterior border and the lateral border next we have is posterior surface so it is the area lies between the lateral border and the medial border this area is known as posterior surface and last we have is uh, medial surface so it is the area lies between the medial border and the anterior border then uh, this area is known as medial surface now we are done with general features so next thing we should know about the bone is side determination as most of details we already covered in general features so side determination of bone becomes easier to us now let's just quickly discuss about the points which we will need to find out orientation of bone first point we have is that upper end is much larger than the lower end and second point we have is medial malleolus which projected downwards lies medially third and last point is that that anterior border is sharp and prominent crest like and it gives s shape appearance to the bone for now guys assume this pen as center line or midline so this will become the left part and this will become the right part now i'm going to put this bone into an anatomical position to the left side to match up with the requirements that we had discussed for the side determination this is larger expanded upper end of bone and this lower end has medial malleolus which actually lies towards the midline that we assume and uh, its anterior border is also lies anteriorly now here on left side as you can see this bone meets up with all the requirements that we need which concludes that the orientation of bone is left side so this is like the easiest way for side determination of bone by assuming some object as a midline which separates area into left and right portion so this was all about general features and side determination of tibia